So it sends something. Sam, 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 Sam. I just gave a spoiler away. So I want to say, made aware of Bookshorp, Bookshorp, Bookshorp. You guys, I don't know why I can't talk. Oh my gosh. Hi everybody, it's Audrey and welcome back to Chapter and Converse. Today I am here with a book haul, finally. This is my first book haul of 2020 and it's from a whole bunch of different places that I bought all since we have been in quarantine and if you guys know and you follow me, you know I was not buying books at the beginning of the year and part of it was I was trying to like chip away at my backlist bookshelf and I was trying to be more thoughtful about what I was buying because like a lot of people, I get sucked into sales and discounts and must have and FOMO and all of this stuff. And I was just buying like crazy, especially towards the end of last year. And I just had more books and I still do than I can possibly deal with, but I was trying to be much more thoughtful about what I was buying. So I will say I have learned a couple lessons from my not buying. A, it's totally doable. And I was not missing out because I was enjoying a ton of books that I had. I was still borrowing from the library and I saved some money. And also I was able to kind of figure out exactly which books I wanted to bring into my world, why I was bringing them into my world. And then with all of the quarantine, it also shifted my perspective in the sense that like, you guys know I'm a book nerd. I think all of us are here because we're book nerds. I am also a writer nerd. I love my authors. I love to write. I'm fascinated by the entire publishing industry process, all of it, because I hope someday to be a part of it. And so many independent bookstores are struggling right now. So many local bookstores, even the chain stores, not Amazon, but other ones are. So I actually supported local stores here near me um, one over in Boston and then another one down in South Carolina, which is probably going to sound random, but bear with me. So at some stage of the quarantine, I was made aware of bookshop.org and I mentioned them in another video of mine and this is not sponsored in any way. This is just me being excited about a cause and a company and an operation that supports local independent bookstores. And what you can do is you can shop online through them and by doing that, you support independent bookstores and you can actually search for stores like in your area or favorites of yours, which is one of the things I did. And then by buying through this versus through an Amazon, you are actually going to support the independent stores. So I will put all the information down below if you're interested in it. I think it's super cool. This is something I didn't even know existed. And I lived in Boston for a long time, which you guys know, again, if you follow me, and one of my most favorite bookstores till this day is the Brookline Booksmith, which is on Harvard Ave in Brookline, which is right outside Boston, off Beacon Street. And it is a store I went to religiously to shop, to go to author readings, to go to signings. It was like such a sanctuary for me. One of my most favorite places in the world till this day. And I was happy to be able to buy through them and support them by what I did or by going through bookshop.org. It's a tongue twister. And then I also participated in multiple online writing events that have been going on. So I'm amazed with how the book community has rallied and people have found new ways of connecting with their audiences in some ways, maybe more ways of connecting with their audiences by being stuck at home. But I participated in y'all stay home, which was part of y'all West. And by virtue of doing that, I bought a book that came from blue bicycle bookstore, which is in South Carolina. They were the sponsor for the event, so I was able to support them. So I bought a book and I actually bought a hat to also help support that bookstore. So I've been trying to kind of like spread the wealth. Then I had a gift card and some of the things did come from Amazon because it was a little bit early on. But basically, this is not a one shop, one stop shop trip that I made. <laughs> So all of that to say, these books came from a bunch of different places over the course of the past month plus, and I finally have enough to make it, I think, a worthwhile video to show you what I've got, so let's just get into it. 
So I'm gonna start with the book that I'm reading right now, which is Death in the Family by Tessa Wiegert. And I came across this on Crime by the Books website slash Instagram. So if you don't follow that, follow Abby. I will link all of her stuff down below also because she makes incredible recommendations for thrillers, mysteries, she does reviews, she does author interviews, she does author interviews on her Instagram. She is doing, I don't know how long this has been going on. And again, being in quarantine has sort of helped me get more exposed to a lot of these folks that are out there and things that they're doing. But every weekend she does like a movie night with Riley Sager and they talk on Twitter and she did an interview with Jennifer Hillier. So great, 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 tons of great recommendations. This is the one of the one, this is one of the ones that was on her list. So I originally, and with a lot of the, no, with some of these, I actually read the book through my library first and I found this through my library. They had the audiobook, and I started to listen to it and two things happened. One, the audiobook was a little bit messed up and I didn't realize it at first, but it went from chapter one to chapter three to chapter two. So chapter one is kind of a bit of a prologue. So when we got to what I thought was chapter two, but was really chapter three, I wasn't totally surprised that I was confused. But then when we went to chapter two, I was like, this is super annoying. Sorry that the audiobook is messed up. But also I was like, I really like this book. I need to have it and I need to read it. So I've talked about how sometimes audiobooks don't work for me because the experience is different and I want to be able to read the book. And I'm super happy I bought this. This is two detectives who respond to a call of a missing person on an island off of upstate New York. And it's like this super rich family. They have this giant mansion. They're super isolated on this island. Of course, there's a nor'easter coming. So the two detectives get out there and basically they wind up being stuck on the island with this family and with a murderer. So it's very kind of Agatha Christie-ish. I'm loving the writing. I'm loving the story. I'm loving the descriptions. I have 50 pages left. I don't want to jinx myself, but this is like really, really good. Like such a great fun find and I will let you guys know exactly what I think of it when I finish it. The next book is one that I have been debating for a while and I finally broke down on and it is A Question of Holmes by Brittany Cavallero and this is the fourth and final book in the Charlotte Holmes Jamie Watson series. I picked up the first three books through Book Outlet. I was waiting for this one to pop up there but it just wasn't happening and at the end of the day I need to know how this series finishes. So. Can't really talk about it too much because I don't want to spoil a lot of the other books, but on the off chance you haven't heard me ramble about this one before. This is a modern day book set in, the original book is set at a boarding school in Connecticut and Charlotte Holmes and Jamie Watson are the great, great, great grandchildren of Sherlock Holmes and John Watson. And they meet, a fellow student winds up getting murdered. They are suspected of the murder in book one and they wind up banding together and off we go. And it still honors the legacy of Sherlock Holmes and John Watson. All of those cases are, you know, this is real life for these folks. The Moriarty's are involved. There's a whole great family tree of the lineage of Charlotte and Jamie. And I love the writing. I think this is just a smart, fun mystery. It is darker than I thought it was going to be, which I was super happy about, because you know I love me some darkness in my books. But it's just, it's twisty, and there's a lot going on, and there's a lot of great people, and it's really well woven together, and they are smart mysteries, and everything makes sense, and I just pulled in from the get-go, and I need to know how the series ends, because I just love them. I just love the two of them, and I love these stories. The next book I picked up was a book that I was hearing about all over the place and I was starting to get a major case of FOMO and I didn't want to have a major case of FOMO. <laughs> so I picked up A Good Girl's Guide to Murder by Holly Jackson. And this book is, it actually came out in the UK last year and the sequel is already out in the UK and I already bought it because I loved this book. This is about a girl, she's a senior in high school, and I actually wound up listening to an interview with Holly Jackson after I read the book, and what I didn't realize is they actually Americanized it. So the original book takes place in the UK, the Americanized version takes place in Connecticut, 
I'll be honest, I'm not totally sure why they changed it, because I would have read it either way, but I'm guessing to appeal to American audiences, maybe that's why they said it here. But she is a senior in high school. I don't know why I'm saying she. Um, Pip. Pippa is a senior in high school, and she is doing kind of her capstone senior thesis, which was not a thing when I was in high school, but that was a long time ago, on a murder that took place in their town five years ago. And somebody, this is all opening stuff, so no spoilers here. It, the girl's boyfriend was found guilty of the murder. A couple days later, he wound up committing suicide, and that was sort of case closed, end of it. But Pip and some other people never really believed that that's what happened. And there were still a lot of unanswered questions and still some things that didn't quite match up, but the cops kind of one and done it and that was the end of it. So Pip is making it her mission to look into it and to proving that he is innocent. And again, much like the Charlotte Holmes series, this book is so smart, so well written, so well done. One of the things I love about this is there are transcripts there are text messages we're going kind of forwards and backwards she's interviewing different people we're hearing kind of like the police reports and like the news reports of what happened at the time but it's really smart how it was literally written and done and i just i loved the mystery i loved the characters and one of the things i loved about this book is there were times like something would happen like they would drop a clue or something that felt like a clue and I would be all, well, there's a clue and this is what it means and this is what happens. And then like one page later, Pip would call it out and dispel it or prove it or whatever it was. So it's like, you think you're like a step ahead of her, but she's actually right there with you. So I was not smarter than the book, but <laughs> it was like being in it with her, but I totally enjoyed it. There was some darkness to it. There are definitely some heavy emotional parts to it but it is, it's just, it's really well done. I highly, highly recommend it. And I cannot wait to read the sequel to this. I don't know if it's gonna be an even bigger series than that, but I just, I couldn't wait as soon as I found out that there was actually a sequel and it was actually out and accessible from Book Depository. I got on that so fast. The next book I picked up is one that I also have talked about before because I listened to the audiobook of it and it's Reputation by Sarah Shepard. And this is, psychological thriller-ish mystery. And this takes place on a college campus. There is an email breach leak where everyone who works at the college is associated with the college, students at the college, all of their emails wind up getting publicized and hordes of secrets just start rolling out. And this is told from multiple perspectives from multiple women who are somehow influenced or impacted by the email breach. And one of the women, her husband winds up getting murdered not long after when his email exposes the fact that he's been carrying on an affair with a much younger girl who calls herself Lolita Bovary, which is just kind of funny. But Sarah Shepard is the creator of Pretty Little Liars, which you guys know that I love. And I really, really enjoyed this book. And again, I did the audio of it, but I thought it was smart. It was engaging. It's definitely a little soapy. It's not the most gripping mystery, but it's there's a mystery woven through it. And there's like one thing that didn't totally add up for me in that there was like a character who like could have been the villain, but maybe was a red herring, but we didn't quite understand, or I felt like I didn't quite understand at the end of the day what their purpose was other than to just sort of be there like I feel like something more could have happened with this character but other than that I really enjoyed it and it's one I want to read again and I wanted to have it so I picked it up but it's definitely more on like the soapy side of things but it's an adult thriller unlike the um, PLL and the other books that she did for teens but I really enjoyed it I just thought it was really well done I was surprised at how much I enjoyed it I had fun with the writing it definitely was lighter in some ways than some of the other books I'm going to talk about, but no less enjoyable. My whole review is in my April wrap up and in my Goodreads and stuff like that. So I'll link that stuff for you guys too. But yes, I picked it up because I wanted to have it. The next book I got as a recommendation from CL Taylor and not, not like 
me personally, but I was listening to a podcast that she was on and she was talking about this book and this author and it's called, it sounded so stupid, Into the Darkest Corners by Elizabeth Raines. And this book came out a while ago, but she recommended it as a great psychological thriller. And again, I kind of like hopped on it. I'm always jotting down books. I'm sure all of you guys are as well. And I think she's great. So I wanted to see a book that she recommended. So this is about a woman named Catherine and she meets this guy, Lee, and it says she can't believe her luck. Gorgeous, charismatic, and a bit mysterious, Lee seems almost too perfect to be true. And eventually it transforms into a raging jealousy and Catherine soon discovers that Lee's dazzling blue eyes and blonde good looks hide a dark, violent nature. So it sounds like he becomes like controlling and super out of control and things get bad. And then we fast forward four years and it says Lee is behind bars and Catherine is trying to build a new life in a new city. So she's got a new neighbor. She's trying to sort of move on and just be open to like a new life and the possibility of new love and just kind of getting beyond her horrible twisty past. And it says until the day the phone rings dot, dot, dot. So gripping psychological thriller, cautionary tale there's a blurb from karen slaughter on the front that says check the locks on your doors and windows and surrender to this obsessive thriller so i'm really excited about this i'm excited about somebody new to read it sounds just kind of right up my alley so dark and twisted and i just it's kind of everything i like to read so i picked it up the next book I picked up was a recommendation from April at Getting Hooga With It, and it's called Blue Monday by Nikki French. And this is the first in a series. And she said, I don't even know how she came across it, but she said like she read this and she like immediately picked up the rest of the series. And I think it's seven books, like one for each day of the week. And you know me, I am down with a good recommendation. I love a lot of what April recommends. She has not steered me wrong. So I finally, picked this one up. So this book is about Frida Klein and it says she's a psychotherapist and insomniac who believes that the world is a messy, uncontrollable place. So a five-year-old boy gets abducted and Frida cannot ignore the fact that he perfectly matches a boy one of her patients describes from his fantasies. Haunted by dreams in which he hungers for a child, Alan Decker is desperate, but would he steal one? Before long, Frida finds herself serving as the reluctant sidekick for Inspector Carlson at the center of a frantic race to find the kidnapper. So it says the first in a remarkable new series, Blue Monday draws readers into a troubled world in which the terrors of the mind spill over into real life. So this is like huge reviews, huge great plugs, spooky, fast paced, more than 8 million copies sold, intriguing debut for a truly unique character. So I am, like I said, I am intrigued. April doesn't steer me wrong. So I picked it up and I'm gonna find out what all the hype's about. The next book is another one that I already mentioned to you guys if my upcoming releases video has come out by now, but if not, or if it has, it's called Pretty Things by Janelle Brown. And this is a book that I heard about from Alexa Dunn. She's another, she's an author tuber who does bookish stuff and she makes great recommendations. She reads tons of thrillers and this was on her list. She wound up reading the arc of it. I couldn't get the arc of it. So I supported my bookstore instead and bought it. But this is three people who we've got like a grifter, a privileged young heiress, and then there's a guy who I'm not sure who he is or how he like figures into all of it, but it doesn't really matter. I think it's the grifter's boyfriend. So they, their paths wind up crossing and it says, um, their paths collide on the cold shores of Lake Tahoe, where their intertwined lives give way to a winter of aspiration and desire, duplicity and revenge. So there is dark secrets and deceit and twisted paths and people trying to escape from things and all sorts of stuff happening. So I don't even know, but it sounds great. And it says they're brought together by the scam of a lifetime in a page turner. So again, Alexa is another one of those people who gives great recommendations. I wholly trust her judgment on things. And I kept seeing this one come up again and again as well. So I took the plunge and here it is. The next book I picked up was part of the Y'all Stay Home from Y'all West. And it is One of Us is Next by Karen McManus. So Karen McManus is one of the presenters 
And if you bought the book, you're gonna get an autographed book plate from the author. So A, I'm trash for that. And B, I really like her as a writer and a creator. And I read One of Us is Lying when it came out. And I have talked about this before. I didn't like it in the sense that I felt like it was pitched wrong because it was pitched as the breakfast club but some but somebody dies like basically like a locked room breakfast clubby kind of mystery and somebody dies so i thought we were going to be like locked in the library the entire time trying to figure out who done it but the person dies at the end of chapter one and then we have to figure out who done it so it didn't make the book bad it just didn't align with my expectations but i enjoyed the book i enjoyed her writing and this is the sequel which actually is the younger sister of one of the main characters from the first book so it's her story but i believe some of the characters from the first book make some cameos or we get some updates on people so this is the sequel so in the first book there was a gossip app kind of like gossip girlish that had a bunch of people's secrets that were disclosed and it caused all sorts of bad things to happen. And in this book, there are also secrets that are getting out about people, but it says this time it's not an app, it's a game, truth or dare. So some people are getting pegged. Someone maybe is trying to keep the legacy of Simon, who's the guy who created the gossip app in the first book. Um, but it says this time there's a whole new set of rules. So I don't know too much about it. I don't want to say too much about it because I don't want to give away anything from the first book, but again, supporting Karen McManus, supporting Blue Bicycle Books, and here we go, it is One of Us is Next. The next book is another one that I have already talked about and I'm not mad about it, and it is Little Secrets by Jennifer Hillier. I was lucky enough to get the arc of this book and I loved it and I knew I needed to have this book in my life to go on my shelf because it is a book I will read again. I love Jar of Hearts. She is definitely an autobi author for me. I was able to pick up, I actually should have included this, Creep, her first book on iBooks a few weeks ago. It was like $1.99, which I'm so excited about because it's really hard to find those physical books from her first, the first few books that she wrote. But I really enjoy her as a writer. She does really great interviews. She has been, like I said, she was on Crime by the Book. She was on Mark Edwards in the Bunker. She just is, she's great. She, I just, I can't say enough great things about her. I got to meet her at Thriller Fest last year. Like I'm just fangirling all over the place. But this book is her latest and greatest. I think it's fantastic. It is about a woman named Marin. And the premise of this book is her four-year-old son winds up going missing and getting kidnapped while they are at a super busy Christmas market in Seattle. So her husband is at like a food cart getting some lunch. She is with their son. She lets go of his hand for moments to answer her phone. And when she puts her hand back down to get him, he's gone. And when they look at the video footage, they see him walking out of the Christmas market with a guy dressed as Santa Claus and they never find out what happens. So we pick up like a year later and Marin is understandably shattered and still trying to put her life back together and keep her marriage on track, but things are just not going so great. And she had hired a private investigator to try and figure out what happened to her son once the FBI basically gave up. And this PI doesn't find her son, but does find out that her husband is having an affair. And this is a story of what that does to Marin because she has already lost her kid and there is no way she's gonna lose her husband too. And man, does this bring out a dark side of her. And I was listening to an interview with Jennifer Hillier and she was talking about, you know, how people don't talk about the dark side and the rock bottom and the ugly, horrible thoughts that people have when they are in these really dark places. And I thought this was really well done. I really enjoyed the writing. I enjoyed the characters. She just, she's just so great with what she does. And there's just so many different layers to this book too. It's not just like a straight up thriller. There's a lot of complications with the relationships. And I know a lot of people, I've listened to people talk about how like their parents and they don't want to read it because the kidnapping piece of it, I totally understand where people are coming from. What I will say is that the kidnapping doesn't play a major role in this. So it's not the investigation of the kidnapping because that was all over a year ago. So this is really about Marin's 
sort of descent into darkness is what this book is about. So obviously her son being missing weighs on her and that is a factor in the book. But one of the other things Jennifer Hillier was talking about was like, she was trying to imagine the worst thing that would happen and she has a four-year-old son and this was sort of her kind of also working through her own fears. So if that gives you any comfort in maybe wanting to pick it up, I don't know if that helps. Not every book is gonna be for everybody. But again, this is not the investigation of the kidnapping. This is just a, a really good look at a really dark place that someone goes to when they are already grieving and struggling. Does that make you want to read it more or less? Okay, we are in the home stretch, and I am embarrassed to say I don't remember where I got the recommendation for this next book, but it definitely came from some podcast that I was listening to, and I, I have gone deep down the podcast rabbit hole again, and some fabulous author that I was listening to recommended this book, so I got it. And it is You Were Made For This by Michelle Sachs. And this is kind of psychological thriller as well. So it says the perfect wife, the perfect mother, the perfect lie. And this is about a woman named Mary, her husband Sam, and their son Connor. And it says they're the perfect family in the perfect place. So Mary's childhood friend Frank comes to visit and she immediately becomes part of the family. So all their lives, Frank and Mary have been more like sisters than best friends. And that's why Frank soon sees what others might miss, treacherous things that are almost impossible to believe. As the dark truth slowly begins to show through the cracks, Mary, Frank, and Sam will go to desperate lengths to keep their flawless-seeming flawless lives intact. Frighteningly honest about the ways we lie to each other and ourselves, You Were Made For This is a gripping page-turner that marks the arrival of a remarkable new voice in psychological suspense. So... Dang, you guys, I'm so sorry I don't remember who recommended this book, but just trust that it came from a good place because I wouldn't have picked it up randomly. But this sounds really good, and there's just something about, like, the best friends that kind of appealed to me, and, again, dark, twisted, psychological, messed up people, it sounds like doing messed up things, is basically... That's all I need in life. And the last book I picked up finally is Lisa Jewell's The Family Upstairs. And A, cover is gorgeous. Whoever does her covers, just bravo, because they are great. And B, I'm a huge fan of hers. So I know a lot of people are like, these aren't thrillers. These are definitely more, I would say, character-driven books with some sort of mystery to them. But I am hearing amazing things about this. I love her writing. I have said this a hundred times already. I have been reading her since her original book, Ralph's Party, came out a hundred years ago when she was writing Straight Up Chiclet. And I am just a huge fan through and through as a writer, as a creator. I love her interviews. I love her stories. I'm just, I am down for the ride. So this was another Brookline Booksmith. Great find. Thank you very much. And this is about a woman named Libby. So on her 25th birthday, she comes home from work to find the letter she's been waiting her entire life for. So she was adopted, but like didn't know who her parents were. So she was gonna find out at her 25th-ish birthday. So she finds out who her parents are, but also finds out that she's the sole inheritor of their abandoned mansion on the banks of the Thames in London's fashionable Chelsea neighborhood. The home, even in its dilapidated state, is worth millions. Everything in Libby's life is about to change. What she doesn't know is that others have been waiting for this day as well, and although they've been in hiding, they are now heading her way. Nearly 25 years ago, police were called to 16 Shane Walk. I'm probably saying that wrong. With reports of a baby crying. When they arrived, they found a healthy 10-month-old safe and sound in the upstairs bedroom. In the kitchen, three dead bodies, all dressed in black, were seemingly posed next to a hastily scrawled note. The four other children reported to live at Cheyenne Walk were gone. So this is like culty, maybe some sort of murder mystery. So it says a propulsive story of two families living in a house with the darkest of secrets. So Again, I have heard such great things from so many different authors about this. I want to say Abby from Crime by the Book just read this also and was after I bought it and was like raving about how good it is too. So I'm excited to read another Lisa Jewell. I haven't read anything since then she was gone. I do have Watching You on my shelf. 
and maybe that's the one that Abby just read, but either way, I was excited to get it. I was excited to buy a book for a good cause and here it is. So I'm not even gonna be all like, that's it, because I know that that was a whole lot of books, but I have to say, it has been a while since I bought a book, as you guys know, but it's also been a while that I feel like I have felt this good about the books that I bought in that I was thoughtful in what I purchased. I slept on a lot of them for a bit. I didn't impulse buy anything. I definitely wanted to make sure that it was authors I was into or recommendations from people I trust or something that maybe has been on my list for a while, which was the case with some of these books. And I also liked that I got to road test a couple of them with my library. And I have a few more books that I did to the library, like Hand on the Wall by Maureen Johnson, which is the last in the Truly Devious series. And it's definitely one that I would like to bring into my world at some stage of the game, but I'm also not rushing to do that. And spoiler alert, I got a few books from Book Depository, not just the new Holly Jackson book. So there will be another haul in the future. It's only gonna be a couple of books, but there are books that you can get in the UK that you can't get here now because of quarantine and you can't get paper to print things on and sometimes books come out sooner there than they come here and let's be honest I'm still supporting a good cause at the end of the day so sorry not sorry I'm really happy about these books I have been reading them as they come in which is another good thing which is part of what my mission was also is I was so guilty of buying a pile of books shoving them onto the shelf and then not reading them. Like had to have them and then wasn't reading them. So I'm feeling really good about that. I'm also feeling really good about the fact that I have done a lot of library reading and have discovered a bunch of books that I wanted to get that I didn't like that much. And I'm so happy I haven't bought them. So this is working for me. I am enjoying this system, if you will, of actually being mindful about purchasing. So it's, it's just, it's, it's a lot, it's a lot of stuff, but I'm very excited about it. I'm excited about these books. So let me know if you guys have been buying anything, if you've got books on your list, if you're sort of like pumping the brakes, this is kind of it for me, I would say. And again, this was an accumulation over many weeks, gift cards, good causes, other things at play, but this is kind of my that last order I placed from book depository for the Holly Jackson book is it. So I'm going to take a breather. There's a whole mess of books that are coming out, which again, I filmed that video and apologies, I don't remember the order things are going up in. So my eyes are very peeled. There will be more books in the future. It's just gonna, I will just see when that all happens. But let me know what you have your eyes on, if you bought anything, if quarantine has changed your purchasing in any way, and if you've read any of these books, thoughts, feelings, other stuff, uh, let's do all that down below and we'll just talk down there. So as always, you guys, thank you so much for spending a part of your day with me. I hope everyone is doing well, healthy, holding on, just who knows how long we're going to be in this, but I just, I hope everyone is doing great. So thank you again. I will see you guys really soon in the next video and take care you guys. Bye.